presentation very quickly. So again, coming back, you can see this patient has a PMD and a cylinder of 4.5 spectacle, but 6.7 on the uh, pentacam. And this also cylinder showing 7.7 .7 in the topography. So uh, the axial length was calculated. The flat and steep K were also calculated. So we did a customized lens for this patient. We ordered a customized lens from uh, one of the Indian companies so that we could uh, cover the seven diopter of astigmatism. And postoperatively, she got a minus seven cylinder. So she had a minus 5.5, so uh, minus seven cylinder. So what we had to do was we had to go, what we had done wrong was instead of placing the lens 0, 180 degrees, we had placed it along the axis. So these lenses are carrying the cylindrical power. So I had to rotate the lens back into 0, 180 degrees as you can see. So once we rotated the lens, so this, these are pl plate haptic lenses and since in, in a, within two days we realized what we did wrong, we rotated the lens to zero, this is one 0, 180 degrees marking. And uh, you, it's quite easy to shift these lenses because they are plate haptic. You have to be a little bit careful about not um, uh, injuring your uh, uh, PC. And once you've rotated that, so the, the next post-surgery uh, we found, the patient had a good refractive outcome. She had a one, minus 1.5 cell. So the important uh, uh, plan here is when you have had a refractive surprise like this, repeat all your pre-op tests. I will master, lens star, topography, pentacam. Dilate and check the position, position of the eye oil. Redo the, we, we were breaking our heads and finding what did we do wrong because it was exactly the same and then we went back and looked at the lens picture. We found that we have, we have to place that 0, 180 degrees and not along the axis. So high incidence of errors in abnormal corneas due to irregular astigmatism. She did have a minus 1.5 cell, but she was quite happy. So this is one of the papers which also says that in, in such cases, what you can do is leave the patient a fake it, go back and do the refraction. They say the intraocular lens power calculation gets better uh, with a fake refraction methods. The second case is an RK patient who has a plus 1.5 cell. She has been very happy. And uh, suddenly now she develops cataract. Now we have to tell her about the problems post RK because most of these patients have a hyperopic shift and you have to tell them that you, they can land up in a, a problem. So this is a conventional lens power calculation using the IOL master and the, um, uh, and the um, uh, lens star. You can see I got a uh, plus 17.5, but using uh, the, uh, this is the uh, pentacam picture of the patient. And then we use the Barrett's formula. You can see that the maximum is 21. So there's a lot of difference between the calculations. So these calculations are very important. So um, this patient, we advised her not to go for a toric lens because I told her we may be off mark and you may have a lot of hyperopic shift. So in that case, it's better to avoid it. So the uh, problems in post PKRK means I'm not showing the video because we are uh, out of time. But the most important thing you have to remember is that these incisions can give way. If you have, so do an ASOCT to find out the depth of the incisions. And uh, the where, wherever you're placing your incision, just make sure it is between the two marks. So this uh, patient had about eight uh, radial keratotomy. Sometimes you come patients with 16 uh, radial keratotomies. In these cases, a scleral incision would be preferable. So biometry is a big bugbear and RK wound gaping and hyperopic shift has to be kept in mind. This again is a patient with a uh, pre elastic power of plus four. She has been very uh, happy without uh, lenses. Now she was very keen on multifocal lenses. So look at this map. It shows a clinical the keratoconus uh, interpreted. It is actually not keratoconus. It is just a hyperprolate cornea. So when you go do an hyperopic ablation, you get a hyperprolate cornea, which is interpreted by the machine as keratoconus. So you can go ahead as long as the uh, incision is well centered. You can see the ablation is a well centered ablation. You can go ahead with a multifocal eye oil again using the Barrett's formula. And I also did this Barrett's formula on the uh, eye oil master 700 is very accurate. So we the, the, we also ca calculated with the Hill RBF formula and they were very close to each other. So we put a plus 2.25 lens and the patient was a very happy uh, patient. So <clears throat> coming to the last case, which is uh, still, uh, so this is, I just wanted to show you this video because this patient had plan O6 six by six and suddenly she decided that she wanted to have um, uh, a multifocal uh, um, eye oil. So, so we put a, a multifocal sarcoflex, it's not working as I just expected. 
Okay, coming to the multifocal eye wells post hyperopic classic, you can go ahead the well center topography, good eye well master and Barrett's formula, and good counseling. You have to uh, make them understand that you may not uh, hit the bullseye always. So this is a patient, very a unique patient, had myopic classic. She was a young patient, only 52. She had minus 2.5 spherical, and we did the Barrett's formula. We did all the calculation. And uh, she had a 1.3 diopter of astigmatism, didn't want to correct it. So uh, this was a slightly decentered ablation. But she's never used a uh, cylindrical spectacle. So now we did the Barrett's form of calculation and got a uh, 20 diopter lens. And you can see that the, according to the uh, Barrett's formula, we are supposed to place the lens at 110 degrees. So we placed an uh, IQ toric lens. And you can see the position of the lens post-op. But what happened to her refraction? See, this is what was planned, and you can see beautiful correlation. But post-op, she had a minus 2 cylinder. She was having minus 2 spherical uh, pre-op, and she had a minus 2 cylinder. So uh, the question is, what are we going to do with this patient? Well, we went and did all the other pre-operative tests, repeated it, and we found that the cylinder was exactly what we planned, and it was at 106. You can see we have placed it at 110 degrees. Uh, and the only problem in this case we realized was the patient had um, decentered ablation. So the options in this patient is to go ahead and do a bioptics, that is do a laser. Either it could be a wavefront optimized PRK, you just correct the spherical power. Or if you want to do slightly more, then you can go for a contour vision, which is a topo guided PRK, which will correct the cylinder, but more effectively as well as normalize the cornea. So that she's waiting for this. So refractive surprises can happen after post lasic PRK, ectatic corneas, vitrectomy, silicon oil. So newer formulas, Barrett's formula, Neil RBF, and topography, good topography has, has uh, helped us achieve nearly, nearly uh, good, very good results. We may not claim that we get 6 by 6 in all cases, but the refractive surprises have definitely come down. And we're hitting the bullseye now almost every time.